It's common to think of whiteouts as loss of all visibility due to blowing snow. For example, helicopters can create their own local zone of whiteout caused by downwash in a hover. Keeping hover time to a minimum will alleviate this situation. Yet ironically, loss of visual contact can occur in clear air when a featureless expanse of a snow-covered landscape blends into the horizon. There are many visual clues in the landscape to assist in discerning objects and judging distances. Shadows, glare, contrast in color and clarity in distant objects are all used when flying in visual flight conditions. But a flat, featureless terrain, such as a lake covered in snow in combination with a low ceiling or diffused light can remove these clues. These conditions can lure pilots into relying on some inadequate visual references, like a dark line in the distance while paying little or no attention to the cockpit instruments. The horizon starts to blend in with the terrain, disorientation sets in, height perception is lost and a whiteout has occurred. Conditions that look good enough for flying visually suddenly require instruments and requires quick reaction. Whenever you encounter whiteout conditions or even have a suspicion of them, immediately climb if at a low altitude. Maintain airspeed, level off and turn towards an area where sharp terrain features exist and as much as possible use your instruments to cross-check your turn. Don't try to fly out of the whiteout area by using some vague external reference. If you do need to fly over large frozen lakes, track from island to island or keep the shoreline in sight and go the long way round. Unless you've had some instrument training, flying VFR over large expanses of snow-covered areas should be avoided whenever possible. A winter whiteout situation can sneak up on an unsuspecting pilot and represent a serious hazard to winter VFR flight. All you need to do is be aware and prepared and you'll arrive at your destination safely.